Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the Funky Podcast. My name is Kieran. My name is Kieran. No. Yes. And today we are here on the Funky Podcast. Sean, how are you today? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, the voices have been, uh, have been stopped. The voices stopped recently, so I'm, a, I'm at least, uh, I'm least enjoying, like, that little moment of peace, but, uh, you, there's no telling when they may come back. How are you doing this week? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty well. So, what, uh, are we going to talk about? No, you, you, that's, that's, that's your, um, that's, that's your line. Sean, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the concept of the film star. The what? The film star. What do you mean by that? The film star. Yes, I heard you the first time. Um, well, in reality, kind of like the death of the film star, mm. in a way. Yeah. And, um, yeah. What are your thoughts on this, Sean? Yeah, so this is something people have been talking about a while. I know, um, yeah, first person that I know of, I mean, like, first, you know, big public figure, obviously not the first person to mention it, I'm sure, but, like, first big public figure that mentioned uh, this idea is um, Anthony Mackie, I believe. Yes. Who talked about, um, and nowadays, like, uh, <clears throat> like an actor's name doesn't have, like, the, the idea of a film star doesn't, like, really mean as much in the current landscape. Hold that thought, Sean. I have the quote right here. My goodness. I've came prepared. There are no movie stars anymore, Mackie said um, in the clip that roams around Twitter. Anthony Mackie isn't a movie star. The Falcon is a movie star. And that's what's weird. It used to be with Tom Cruise and Will Smith and Stallone and Schwarzenegger. When you went to the movies, you went to see the Stallone movie. You went to see the Schwarzenegger movie. Now you go to see X-Men. So the evolution of the superhero has meant the death of the movie star. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, Yeah, he's kind of right. <laughs> uh, pretty much. Yeah, no, he, he is correct. Um, But my answer would be, does it really matter at the end of the day? Yeah, no, that's kind of a thing I've thought about as well, because it's like, like, there's been plenty of examples where it's like people like, um, people, uh, like, like a lot of like movies have like been, uh, like a lot of like lackluster movies have been pushed in the past, like, by the name of the star more than anything. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you could argue even nowadays, like, mediocre movies get pushed by the name of like an IP or a brand. So, mm -hmm. like, that still, that still persists, but it's yeah. like. Like, it's at least, like, at least, like, people are being, like, like, reeled in from, like, the actual, like, uh, work the, itself. Yeah, the story and the characters and things yeah. like that. And they're not seeing the actors, they're seeing the characters. Mm. And, you know, the, the Falcon is the star, yes, but is that a bad thing? I mean, you've had such a wonderful time playing the Falcon. Isn't that what you want? You want the audience to escape. And also, another argument would be, you know, with, uh, the examples he's brought up yes I enjoy a Schwarzenegger movie I enjoy a Stallone movie but the parts that really stand out to me are the vulnerabilities of those heroes and stuff like that we enjoy those sides to it and then we enjoy the mix of action with that as well because was that you know Rambo was the star and Stallone was the star and all that you know and Stallone was the star really like if you look back at the action movies and Schwarzenegger was the star and Will Smith you know all that like it, do it does make sense but the argument I give up is that we enjoyed the stories of that Stallone wasn't Stallone it was Rambo and you know that's what we want we want the audience to escape and not see the actor but like I understand what it means and like the culture of Hollywood and things like that and how that's fading away. But is that necessarily a bad thing? You know? Yeah, like and even like Anthony Mackie himself and I know uh you know, Quentin Tarantino and everything as well. Like a few people have mentioned this since as well. Um 
none of them really... S yeah, they, just, they, they list as like an example of how like, oh, the, the, the movies have changed. But it's like no one ever really says it's like a bad thing necessarily. Like, Yeah. Some people believe it is a bad thing. Like uh, some yeah. uh, things I've shown you. <laughs> uh, some uh, rude people that mm. I don't know if we will talk about it because we're positive people here. But, you know. Good vibes only. Yeah. On the funky, on the funky podcast. Yeah. Um, this is another quote as well, and it says, Studios rely almost exclusively on superhero movies and franchises for which they can just as easily cast newcomers as stars. Uh, like, as, well, like, does that mean like, oh, okay, does he mean like, oh, they're using the IPs to uh, hire newcomers, or does he mean like, uh... They're using the IPs to uh, as an ex as news to overshadow the newcomers. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really sure. If it's um, um well, if it's the argument that it's like this is costing like, yeah, this is like costing newcomers like roles or anything. I don't agree with that. Yeah. Um, like I'd say, it's quite the opposite. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. obviously, like you know, there was that thing. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen was like she lost like a few good roles because she was scheduling conflicts with uh, hmm. playing Scarlet Witch and she wasn't dissing Marvel f or Disney yeah. for that she was just you know there was a couple of good things that yeah, I could no. have done you know I, I, feel like, I feel like yeah I feel like nowadays like a lot of people, a lot of people like, like to like pin like every issue they have with cinema currently like on the <laughs> MCU but it's like no I think even, even you would have to agree like the MCU did not invent scheduling conflicts yeah no. yeah no no she, she wasn't like yeah. Directly at Marvel, but some people have. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, listen to this. So, like, with the movie star thing, and here's the thing where I'm, like, arguing against it because I don't think it fucking matters. Well, at least to me. And here's, like, a, an argument I have is that it was, like, like, look, at, let's listen to this. For 1989's Batman, Jack Nicholson took a six million dollar paycheck and a cut of the box office and merchandise sales ultimately netting about 60 million dollars that's just for jack and like that's like and his name is like one of the first ones that pops up and yeah it's just like i like i get it but there there comes a time where i'm just like yo like you know there's so much money being spent mm. and so much for this and that and like you know, just for one actor, just to kind of act and stuff. It's a bit too didn't much. He, didn't he get paid more than Michael Keaton for that as well? Oh, obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, and that's like, huh? Yeah. Like he, sh he, sh he shouldn't be. <laughs> and Marlon Brando's name is on the poster before Christopher Reeve for as Superman. And Marlon Brando's in only, a, like, his birth father near the beginning, and it was somebody yeah. else that was his birth father. So, yeah, it's crazy. And again, like, yeah, yeah apparently it's the trend for early DC movies, but, like, I know, like, in Batman and Robin as well, Arnold Schwarzenegger's name is the first on the poster, yeah. and he's, like, like, the third... The or, villain. He's, like, the fourth or fifth, like, most, like, biggest character in the movie, I'd say. Well... His name comes first, because he's, like... I would say third. I would say third. Probably... Yeah, I'd say, like, probably more in Poison Ivy. Like, I don't know, like, as much as Batgirl in the movie, but, you know, eh. Either yeah. way, he's either way he's not the top. Yeah. Even though like he um, technically is in the cast. List. Yeah, and uh, the nearest recent equivalent is Robert Downey Jr.'s uh, ten million fee for Iron Man Two, uh, that was negotiated after the success of the first one. Now I'm not gonna like argue about like Nicholson, and I'm not gonna argue about all these stars. I'm not arguing that at all. But what I'm saying is that. The movie star kind of thing and like people looking up to him and stuff yes that's a uh, sort of thing but it takes away from the magic of cinema and the magic of you know seeing it so that's why i don't think it really matters if whoever's in the film and i get it especially with like independent movies why they have a hard time getting stuff made is because uh the first thing uh studios ask are who's in it or you know people that are gonna finance it ask who's in it you know and uh, mm. if if it's someone that's either an unknown, hasn't done much work, or if it's someone that was in, you know, like, little bits here and there, rather than, you know, a big name, it can, you know, take away from something. But I don't know. That's just 
So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Um, of course, well, yeah, like, I'm not blaming any of the actors for, like, taking all these big roles. Like, I'm not... I'm not gonna like sit here and say like, w wow, f fuck you, Jack Nicholson, for accepting <laughs> six million dollars in like a merchandise and deal the biggest movie. How, how dare? No, no, that, he's doing his job. He's doing his job, and it's like you know, I, yeah, I man. If I was in the situation, I'd probably do the same thing. So yeah, um, <laughs> not his fault, but uh, it's the studio's fault, probably. I would say. Um, well, whoever is uh, the one that's paying them at the end of the yeah, time. Yeah, mi whoever Mr. Business is in this uh, yeah. in this situation. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, go on, go on. Because, yeah, no, I do agree. Um, yeah, no, I do, I, yeah, I do agree, like, when you, like, take so much of the real life, uh, when the real life, um, what do I think? When, yeah, when the name of a person, like, takes, uh, takes center stage over the film itself, that, uh, yeah, it's kind of, like, it kind of goes against the point of the film. Or yeah. like the point of film, even um, in general, like uh, to be like a form of uh, escapism, I guess. Like, uh, if not escapism, then at least you know, the film should speak for itself. Is basically what I'm saying, and um, I'd argue, yeah, that's one case where I think uh, it it doesn't allow the film to speak for itself when so much of the hype is around mm -hmm. the people that are in it. Uh, on the flip side, as well, I think there is. I mean, in the days of the movie star, so to speak, like, I think there was definitely a lot of cases where there is, um, a smaller, perhaps, like, uh, more niche film that ended up, like, being pushed to, like, good financial success because of the name associated with it. Oh, yeah. Name, That's happened before. Yeah. Of, of course. Like, it's a, um... Yeah, name a few, if you can. Uh, well, I was just looking today and I found out, like, uh, like, Black Swan, the movie Black Swan was, like, a pretty big success. And I imagine, like, a big part of that would have been because of a Natalie Portman rather than anything else because that's not that's not a mainstream movie at all black swan that's very uh yeah i suppose there was like a lot of marketing that put it was put into it and yeah like, and i imagine like it, Portman, so. it, yeah and i don't think it would have gotten that without her really honestly um yeah like the average person out there they're not like they're not gonna see they're not gonna like they're not gonna be like hyped up around like oh the latest darren aronofsky movie like he's a name that like he doesn't really mean the art yeah to the i guess i hate this word to the normie i guess to the normie like uh yeah darren Aronofsky like isn't gonna like be like pushing like tickets or anything but natalie portman would be in that yeah. i think uh she played a big part in like bringing the movie to the success uh that it had uh, uh, i would say mila kunis as well cause yeah she's in it as well. yeah Do uh yeah um yeah no one thing i was gonna go on about uh speaking that you brought up Natalie Portman, uh, and you brought up obviously Alicia Silverstone and that. There's a big thing about uh, the pay gap. Now we're not going to get into like feminism politics and all of that, but when you think about it, you know why does an actress who's literally the same billing as this other co-star, like they're co-starring together? in their own thing like they're the main stars but literally they are co-starring together in uh the feature film and for them to have like the same amount of screen time and the same amount of you know lines here or there or whatever you know and to get paid less is just crazy uh, it's absolutely yeah atrocious. it's ridiculous yeah uh and then there's the um the excuse about uh, the other thing, which is oh god, no, I can't think. <laughs> do, do you want to com? Do you have any comments actually? So. Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, yeah, I mean the idea of a movie star is always kind of uh, kind of biased towards a certain uh, type of person. I would say, uh, I mean white man, let's just say that. But like, yeah, um, <laughs> that's yeah, that's another. I mean, I, I think, like, I mean, I think in general, like, regardless of, like, what happened to the concept of the movie star, like, that was, that was gonna change anyway, and I'd say it has, ch I mean, it's changed, I think. Yeah, uh, it's definitely Still changed. changing for the better. Yeah, but, and um, it's changing for the better, and, like, people are still giving out about it in, like, a very, yeah. very big way, and it's so frustrating to me, because, mm. you know, when you look back at, uh, you look at how long it took for a female director to win best picture and stuff like that mm. right and then like 
you could like argue that oh maybe it wasn't the best person for the job but no it's because um there was a lot of uh different things where it's like it's their turn it's his turn or it's her turn you know and it's all this kind of oscar Beatty stuff and then you look at you know performances that won that year the, and like you look back and they're like did that deserve to win and does this person deserve to be a star like does steven steven mm. seagal deserve to be a movie star or you know like arguably you can have those mm. conversations about which one is what but like mm. at the end of the day it comes down to that screenplay and it comes down to the characters and does that resonate with the audience and stuff like that is uh the acting you know good and you know kind of hit the audience and hit the right beats of the script and the way it's supposed to naturally come across in that genre you know what i mean uh yeah yeah i, I agree with that um like yeah it's another thing is like i think like a lot of people like uh at one point would get propelled to the status of movie star and it's like i don't like to use words like oh they don't deserve that or whatever but it's like I mean, there's a lot of people like, who would star in big movies, but, like, they weren't, like, the most talented of people out there. And it's, like, you can argue of, like... I mean, this is kind of awkward, because, like, you're getting into the stats, like, should someone, like, have a successful enough career if they're not good at their job? Which, like, yeah. usually you'd say no, but also feels like, ah, no, I don't like saying that, because it feels kind of like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know the word, it was, like, but, like, very, like, cold. Which I typically don't like, but it's, like, it's kind of the harsh truth. is like, yeah, a yeah. lot of people, like, um... I don't know, <laughs> like... A Vince Vaughn type of person, for example, is like, you know, Vince Vaughn was like, for a while, like, one of, like, a, a huge name in, in, like, it was, like, a huge name, like, in loads of, like, big movies, but, like, can you, do you think there's serious, like, a single person out there in the world who's, like, whose favorite actor is Vince Vaughn? Like, like, what does a Vince Vaughn fan look like? Well, I actually, I quite liked him in Wedding Crashers. I yeah, no, it's, like, he's been good in some stuff, but it's, like, <laughs> I mean, it's, like, yeah, but he's, like, He's definitely someone who was like definitely like pushed a movie star status. Because, yeah. But like, does he really have like movie star quality? You know. Uh, like. Like, can you see someone like standing Vince Vaughn? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> the internet's a wild place, Sean. Yeah. I'm Literally true. anybody can be stand. True, honestly, true, true, honestly. true. I saw. I, I I saw one time I saw someone making. And you know it's not like it's not like um. Not to say like the dude wasn't popular because like he's massively popular, but it's like I never, I never really assume people like buy into like the uh, the personality that much. I saw one time a James Cameron fan cam, and I just like looked at that and I went, "Wow, that this person made a James Cameron fan cam." Like I think that speaks for itself. I saw someone make, uh, you know, Matt Dillon. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, in this uh, famous movie called Rumblefish, and uh, what a name. <laughs> Oh, is that? It's a uh, Francis Ford Coppola directed movie. Oh, shit. Uh, with uh, Mickey Rourke in it. Um, it's it's interesting. Uh, Nicolas Cage is in it as well. Oh, nice. And uh, it's all in black and white. It's very artsy sort of thing. It's uh, it's interesting. There's only like one scene where there's actually color, and it's really it's a wild movie. It's it's really interesting. But the one thing that stood out to me was on the internet they have like you know those uh lovey uh dovey things that they made for like you know robbie p back in the day with twilight mm. well some people still make robbie p things i'm in and, every uh, conversation from now on i'm gonna keep referring to robert pattinson as robbie p i think it just it flows out the tongue better it's so much better yeah. he should change his name to that that, that should be his instagram name robbie p that it should that be. that should be his rapper name I want, I want, I want, I want to go see a Robbie P concert where like Robert's just up there on the stage spitting some bars. bars, yeah, spitting yeah, some bars about a, about a, about a, I don't, I don't know what he does in his day to day life, but um, whatever, you know. Yeah, but no, do do you realize that that uh, there, there's like edits of that man and like yeah, they're yeah. calling him like da Dilf and like all Dilf, that. Yeah, yeah, it's he's just too, like I think he's too young for that, but okay. Matt Dillon. Oh no, I had Robert Pattinson. I saw. <laughs> oh no, no. Oh, no, no, uh, Robert, they made, I don't know if they call him that, but they call Matt Dillon now, uh, D-I-L. Yeah, no, I, yeah. okay, I can agree with that then. <laughs> I think, um, yeah. I know, but, like, and they use, like, uh, footage from that film by Francis Ford Coppola, so they're using mm. it 
Uh, it's got a, I, w I wonder. I wonder. Does Francis Ford Coppola like? Is he in tune with what Stan Culture is? Absolutely and does he, not. And, no. And does he know? Does he know people are like making this using his work? I. I the answer hope is not. obviously no. I hope not. But I hope it's is yes. Oh God. Um. Yeah. No. But like, it makes you think, doesn't it? Because mm. obviously it's Matt Dillon, right? He's nice, but you know, you look at that culture, like anybody can be uh like become you can stand for anyone like you could be like a mary berry stan you can be a tato fan stan uh you can be a stan stan uh maybe like you can get off to lauren and hardy you know just i don't know just like there's just so much like culture out there that it doesn't like they look at these i don't know like, some of it's nice and very, you know, chill, whatever, but some of it's quite creepy, and it, it kind of speaks to fan culture itself, and, like, there's plenty of movies made about it. That wonderful mm. one with uh, Travolta that we mentioned before. Ah, oh, The Fanatic. Yeah, yeah that was... Like th that, oh. that one, that's... Like, the on social, page... Social commentary of the decade, look, frankly. Like, thank you for a durst for that. On page... That idea is not that bad. It's actually really, really wonderful. And to think about that uh, with like the movie star and stuff like that. And I think that's why it's a good thing that it's died off a little bit as well. Mm. Uh, but like anybody, like, you know, Stan and movie, I don't know. It's just, it becomes a bit of, you know, like... Just wrapping your brain around it, you know what I mean? It's kind of mm, yeah. interesting. And that's another thing as well, is like... With stand culture being like such a big thing in the past few years, it's like... And like, also like, it started off more with like music, and I like, I don't think like, I don't think like the idea of the pop star or anything has been, uh, has gone down at all, but um... The idea of um, yeah, the idea of like a movie star going down, but like there's a lot of people out there that like stand actors um yeah. still and it's like i mean stan culture still like a, a, yeah again a force more in like music but i mean it's in acting too and it's like and i guess that's kind of interesting how mm -hmm. in like in one like circle it's like if anything like taken off more in recent years yeah. and another it uh but yeah at the same time it seems like the whole idea of a star is dwindling but there is a negative to that and that is social yeah. media because yeah. standing on social media say now someone was a really really big fan of the director of the Ch of Chinatown, Roman Polanski, right? <laughs> I'm not joking about this. Saying how like their favorite director was that, <laughs> and they had that on their um, what it's letterbox or on Twitter and stuff like that. Oh, and they have, man. I I don't know, maybe their like cover picture is like Roman Polanski with like a camera or something like that, just like looking <laughs> Roman like Roman Polanski with a fucking like love heart filter on it. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, like Lover of Cinema or whatever, but you know, the amount of hate that would get, but like they're just, maybe they don't know about their sort of thing, because not everybody knows about the controversy, you know. I mean, to be fair, if you're a Stan, if it's a Stan account, like I assume like you're keeping up with them, so like we can't uh, I, I, I guess so, yeah, no I don't mean it that way, <laughs> but you know if, yeah. even if you do know about it you mm. can like separate the art from the artist yeah, but the artist just, is so uh, good that you enjoy it and stuff like that and if like Roman Polanski is just a mere example like the most cruel example yeah. I can think of like off the top of my head now I was gonna bring but, it up as well yeah go on uh like um I guess like in the current age, people, people people are more aware of like the morals of the people involved yeah. with these things like I think, that, I think that's almost like another thing that's contributed to like death the movie star is like people like like, this feels like a weird word to use. People, like, don't trust people, like, to be... G people don't trust other people to be, like, good people anymore. Yeah. I and mean, you can make, it, like, a wider comment about that in the whole world, but I think, oh, I think that's one case. Maybe, like, maybe a lot of people, like, I don't know, just, like, don't like the idea of, like, a movie star anymore because, like, it gives, like, such a, like, such influence to a person who, like, yeah. could turn out to, like... Like, even for, like, a more recent example, like, I'm pretty sure, like, if I looked, I could, like, easily find, like, some Ezra Miller stan accounts, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Probably, probably shouldn't have, shouldn't have done that. Uh, um, yeah, no, I, I, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Um, but like to be honest, um, you know, there, there's even like stuff where like, oh, what actors do you like? 
what performances do you like? And you're like, oh, I love Johnny Depp. And then, oh, I also love uh, Zachary Levi. Oh, I also love blah, blah, blah. And then, like, people are just going to go on about their content. Some people will go on about it. But, look, I'm not going to be narcissistic, but I will. If someone told me, they're like, you know what, Ezra Miller is actually a good actor. I'd be like, well, you're not wrong. He actually is. If you watch Perks of Being a Wallflower, Mm. he is a very, very good actor. He's great in that Snyder Cut. He's great. I've seen him in other independent stuff. Like, he is fantastic. And, uh, and but I need, understand. Yeah, and we need to talk about Kevin as well, which uh, yeah. I think it was John Campia that said, in hindsight, that might have just been a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree with like all of the different stuff that's going on. It's just absolutely, mm-hmm. it's crazy and it's nonsense. And I wish it didn't happen um, because he is such a wonderful talent. But, you know, some, some of these things do happen. But you see, the thing is, well, other things that get on the news, like, compared to Ezra and, like, people giving out about, I don't know, uh, what was it? People were giving out about, like, Ice Cube and people are giving out about Vanek and Lily and then uh, you, like, read through, like, this whole, what was it? People giving out about Gal Gadot and then people giving out about, you know, that everyone's hated on the internet somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that Jennifer Lawrence thing was mental was, uh, yeah that's two people got mad about that but like people were laughing and mocking her and it's just like oh god just shut the fuck up mm. um i mean like that thing with sam smith um you know where where people were giving out about like the way he was like more like dressing up in uh more I mean, feminine or whatever yeah. and like i was like you know what leave the fucker alone yeah, leave, and then leave. when i saw like the balloon thing i was like okay like you know, it's not the first choice, but, like, other artists have dressed that way before, so like, I don't really li- understand what's... Like, literally, like, who is it hurting? Yeah. Is my thing. Like, what would Sam Smith do to, like, hurt anybody? Like, these... Yeah. Like, these people would not... These people, like... I mean, it feels weird to say this, because, like, they probably grew up around the exact same time, but, like, how how do these same people, like... How do these same people, like, survive, like, David Bowie? <laughs> and exactly. everything David Bowie was doing. Like, how do they yeah, survive and then, now, like, like, they're pissed about Yeah, Sam and Smith. then, like, people have commented that. And then what you get is, how dare you put Sam Smith in the name of David Boy? David Boy is blah 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 blah. Uh, and like, that's just like that's just distracting from like the point they're making. Yeah, exactly. How dare you put him in the same sentence? He doesn't even deserve to. What the fucking hell, Brita? And then like all the, but uh, back to like the kind of stars things. Here's another quote. I believe this is from Mr. Burr, not Bill. Is a guy called Ty, and he's a. Uh, a critic fair play to him mm. when we were content to gaze up at movie stars on a screen that seemed bigger than life the exchange was fairly simple we paid money to watch our daily dilemmas acted out on a dreamlike stage with other se- with ourselves recast as people who were prettier smarter tougher or not as scared I take great offense to the idea that anyone on the screen is prettier, smarter, tougher, or less afraid than me, but otherwise I agree. <laughs> but it is interesting to think, though. They are glamorized up a little bit, aren't they? Like, you know, yeah. you have that kind of thing in Hollywood where, you know, uh, I can't really think of examples and stuff like that, but a lot of it feels glamified and not as dirty. But. The older directors were the ones to go dirty. Yeah. Do you remember that? Like, you go back and watch, like, a a Leone movie. Like, Eastwood is in the dirt. He's on that set. It's probably freezing. He's there in, like, the thing. And, you know, it's, like, going through mud and stuff like that. And he probably did that shit for real. And then you look back at The Exorcist. uh, Your one was literally, like dragged across the room and stuff like that and mm. broken she wasn't necessarily a movie star or whatever uh but i think that's kind of changed now because we're getting a lot of uh different uh actors and stars who are more uh along the like like they are good looking i would say but there are those who 
aren't as, you know, pretty or whatever or, you know, not, not necessarily sex icons or, you know, not really wanting to be in that vein are just there to make the film and that's kind of cool that's kind of interesting so yeah like um like one i would say one of the bigger stars at the moment is like pedro pasco and like he's he's definitely like no who i would like describe as like he doesn't like he isn't like hollywood looking quote unquote but like i mean people like nowadays like they don't they don't mind i think that's like there's only like people like that's usually the fact like i think attitudes have changed around like uh appearance and like yeah, like, people, like, naturally care less because it is kind of a shitty thing to care about anyway on, like, that deeper level, but yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, can, I can agree with that. Yeah, yeah. like, there, there isn't, like, the idea of, like, the Hollywood image, so to speak, is, um... It doesn't resonate with people anymore as much as I think it mm. used to. And I'd say, that for the most part, that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I mean... It's just, like, it just makes it, like... What's I'm looking for? Like, it, uh... It makes it, like, I don't know, it's, like anyone hypothetically like could see themselves in a film nowadays and i feel like people i mean obviously like some people like we call that forced diversity but it's like you know i think yeah no i think yeah um, it's becoming a lot more open recently definitely. yeah that's i mean i think yeah yeah no I, th I don't think that's a bad thing at all yeah um yeah it's becoming more uh open for uh every race and like people are going on about tokenization and stuff like that mm -hmm. that they're only giving this to a certain star because of their race or gender or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's still the same fucking lines. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to really change anything. And, like, you know, obviously we all, like, breathe the same air. And, but we do act differently. Mm. So, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's the creative decision that is made by those people. If they want, oh, yeah this actor would actually suit this better because not because of their race but because they think they bring a certain gravitas towards the role and yeah that's the way it is and you know some people are going on about we're giving out about black culture i think it was recently that like idris elba was like i want to be not known as like a black actor i just want to be known as just an actor and that's fair enough i think um but yeah, like you know, there's a lot of people you can consider movie stars, and we can, people can have that conversation. You know, like for me, I'd consider like I know Michael being a movie star and stuff like that, just in my heart, and like I'd st stand for him, I suppose. But um, in the minds of other people, he's not, and that's that's a good thing, I think, because people can kind of choose their own movie stars now. You yeah, as well, I mean? like that's another thing. Um... Yeah. That's an, yeah, it's another thing is, like, I was going to bring, like, this might be, like, this is kind of, like, a point of, like, I haven't really thought through it that much, but, like, do you think there's, um, do you think there's just, like, so many people now just in the industry that it's, like, it's hard for anyone to be, like, known as, like, for anyone to be, like, the most, like, the biggest name in Hollywood because it's, like, again, because there are just so many, like, different, like, facets of the entertainment industry now and it's, there's just so much, there's just so much, like, being made that it's like how can anyone like be on the top of all of it i guess so i mean there is that argument to be made about you know certain uh works of art and stuff um you know they're like promised these uh big things but when certain uh pic motion picture or whatever just doesn't do well and it fails and they end up being, you know, beside someone on a set of, like, a TV show or something. Instead of, like, you know, taking off and being known to the world as this big star or whatever. I think that's a shame, especially when they have mm. the qualities for it and it becomes, you know, against uh, the actor. But to your point of, like, too many people, um, I guess so. And it, become, it becomes, like... Uh, a thing I had about, uh, you know, uh, that uh, conversation we had about the Marvel films and stuff like that with the, the big stars and stuff like that, in that, and they don't, you know, branch out enough. But then, like, they actually do in some cases, and they they really, you know, they brought back Alfred Molina and stuff like that, and he wouldn't be, 
you know, I, I consider him a very good actor, but I wouldn't consider him a star necessarily, mm. like, especially in now days yeah. before, but they brought him like, back. I don't, and, like, I don't yeah. think that, I don't think like the sentence like, yo, we got to go see the new Alfred Molina movie. I don't think anyone <laughs> said that, <laughs> but like, that doesn't mean he's not fantastic. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Um, and and like, that's a good point you mentioned, like with No Way Home and everything as well. It's like, that's another one where it really calls into question, like, is the movie star, re- like, I like, say, like, people, like, don't care about actors, I think is inaccurate, because it's, like, the entire, like, the entire, like, build up in the marketing for No Way Home was, like, basically defined as, like, are these two actors going to be, like, in the movie for, like, half an hour <laughs> with, like, Tom McGuire and, like, Andrew Garfield, but it's, like, that's another interesting question, because I like, feel like we're, like, we're really attached to both of them, to both their, like, connections yeah. to Spider-Man, like, they love them in those worlds, but it's, like, how many of those same people like actively like, keep up with their careers? Like I would say, like not even not even half of them. Mm-hmm. Like not, maybe not even a quarter of them. Like would actually like keep up with like a new Andrew Garfield or a Tobey Maguire thing. Even though like even though in Andrew Garfield's case, like he's done like a lot of fantastic work. Yeah, so yes, it's, like, yeah. I think I think he definitely deserves to be like uh, recognized uh, just on his skills as an actor. But um, yeah, it's like people are like very invested in like a perform a performance they've made. Yeah. Even, yeah, I know it's kind of weird because it's like people like were really invested in seeing them, but it kind of it wasn't even for, but it kind of it wasn't even for them, but it kind of was like to see them. But it's yeah, it's as them as yeah. Peter. Wanted yeah, it's like it's them yeah. as Peter, but it's like people are like really attached to like specifically that actor in that role. Yeah, but they might not be attached to like that actor in general. Yeah, I get you. It's really I odd. Get, yeah, yeah, I get you. Think about I it. Get you. Um, yeah, and it becomes like the death of the movie star in a way mm. because even Anthony said that you don't go see Garfield and Maguire, you go see those two Spider Man. Um. So yeah, like, uh, for some people, like favorite actors, you know, are movie stars and whatever, and that's perfectly fine. You know, there's uh. Mm this whole thing about who's your favorite actor and like there's so many you can choose from you could say a name that nobody has heard of uh you know maybe one you saw in like a live theater performance and even like you know going to every show just as a respectful passionate fan not stalking mm. uh but you know you could like say everyone from uh i don't know cory or Fair City, or uh, Bradley Walsh, or, you know, like, you could say someone like that, or you could say DiCaprio, or you could say, like, a few steps below, and you could go Blake Lively, and then you could say Brie Larson, or, uh, you know, and then you could go back and choose John Wayne, you know, and, like, Mm. you can have that conversation with people, were they good, or were they, you know, and, like, it it just becomes this whole big thing, but to be honest, like <sighs> arguments can be made. Was it really a thing? You know, like was the movie star really a thing? Because yes, they were like lamified and everything, but that's everybody you now. I think mm. that's as you were saying. Like, there's a lot of them, and there's a lot of really really talented ones, and there's almost too much. And I think that's why they can't just leave everybody out. I think everybody gets to say, and that's a good thing in a way as well. Yeah. Uh, but to the point I was making earlier about um, s- someone that was, uh, you know, the movie didn't do well. Uh, I I don't think financially and not really critically as well. Um, but the star of that, you know, had potential to go on to great big things. But ended up in, I think, like, a TV show and, like, some stuff I had never heard about. But, like, I'll follow their careers, obviously, because I thought they were very good. But, and then you, like, get, you know, you hope for the best for them, that they will find uh, a role that's good for them. And, like, even you mentioned Natalie Portman earlier. Apparently, she found it hard to find work because... People didn't like her in Star Wars that much. Like, casting mm. people and stuff. And it was the same with Hayden. I think he was... uh, 
they were thinking of him for Twilight, but they heard about the Star Wars thing and were like, nah. So. God, yeah, no, and that's like, I mean, especially now, like, it seems like probably like ridiculous to even say, like, there was a point when, like, oh, people, like, didn't, like, think highly of Natalie Portman because obviously, like, she's trying to be acclaimed and successful yeah. now, but I mean, yeah, it's kind of another issue. Um,. With, like, how competitive the industry is, is, like, you can make, like, one fuck up and, like, you're done to a lot of people. Like, they don't yeah. want to, like, see you anymore. And that's, like, yeah. like especially someone like Ian Christian, who was, like, he was just a newcomer at the time. And, like, um, he, like he didn't even really get a chance. And, uh, yeah, yeah I mean, like, like, he, he, then, like, he did, then, like, some TV. And, yeah. Like, yeah. he was getting work, but it was, like, nothing huge. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice. It was, like, and it's, it's weird because, like, again, like, years later now, like, people, like, who grew up with him, like, love him now. Yeah. Like yourselves included, because we, we grew up with the previous request, and it's like, I was already thinking as well, with the Obi Wan Kenobi show, like the biggest thing. I mean, again, like the biggest thing with the Obi Wan Kenobi show, like the hype for it, I think, was probably the actors, like you and especially, but like also, like I think, I would say like Hayden was honestly like after a certain point, like more people were excited like for him than you and McGregor coming yeah. back. Yeah, and like speaking of that as well, and it's, and it's like yeah. I would say like, they, let's yeah. think back like ten years ago, like pre The Force Awakens, like. People probably would have, like, made a meme about that. Like, oh, my God. Like, God, imagine, like, how terrible it would be. Like, Darth Vader comes back, but he's played by, like, Hayden Christensen. Like, oh, my God. Wouldn't that be terrible? It's like, people, like, would make a meme out of that. But now, years later, like, the prequels have, like, gone up in, like, a lot of people's estimation. Anyway, yeah. like, that exact thing did happen. And, like, everyone was, like, hyped for it. Yeah. And if you look back at it as well, people were excited to see Hayden Christensen back as Anakin. But people probably well to be honest like i would be very surprised if you know about it only if you follow the careers but he was in this movie with harvey keitel called the last man or something like that it's shit but and then there was like a movie with emma roberts with him in it and they were like a couple or something and i don't know how that went i think it was called like little italy or something like that yeah i heard about that when it was coming yeah. out actually because it was like it was like the first quote-unquote major movie he'd done in a while so i remember like hearing a bit about that yeah and uh it was like you know some people were hyped for it but a lot like oh. to be honest like star wars is a big thing and like you know anakin skywalker is the movie star darth vader is the movie star, and like obi-wan you know and it's you could talk all day about this and stuff like that but the point is, with all of us, is that does it does it matter? Like, hmm. that, why does it matter? Like, I'd be very interested to see why does it matter in the culture of change, because I think that's a good thing because yeah. people are more attached to the characters and the story and all of that rather than you know glamorized people, because that's not what they are like. You know, they're not like. Well, you know, they're not like these beings that are Aurora or whatever. They're very good people, don't get me wrong. And like Kate Winslet has said this, like, you know, uh, you know, it's like this glamified dress. What does it mean? What does it matter? What does it mean? You know, obviously fashion, whatever, great. But, you know, th does it matter? And then like she said to the camera straight away when I get into the car, I take this off. I'm in my pajamas and I've eaten chips because that's what we do and stuff like that. And it was really funny, but true. You know what I mean? So what? what's your overall, like, speaking of, like, this whole thing where, like, everything is kind of rigged for these stars to be able to kind of get uh, different things? Um, but also, what do you see, like, the good side with also letting... Like newcomers in to like give press and stuff like that uh but you know do, do you have any like thoughts on that overall thing uh yeah no i generally think it's um like it's good that it's uh like if it means that it, like nobody gets like if like the way the industry works now is like not many people like really get to be like at the very top of like uh the totem pole i guess yeah, i'll go with that before the total pole um not many people get to be on top of that but it means, like, in general, like, everyone gets to be a part of it at all, then I think, like, that's honestly a good trade-off. Yeah. And as well, like, I think it's, um... One thing that I think of is, like, do you think, like, the idea of a television star 
nowadays like means more than a movie star because i'm thinking like yeah tv has become a lot more cinematic nowadays yeah uh with netflix and things like that and i argue like yeah a lot of people like i'd argue like you know a lot of ways like part of like the idea that like oh like blockbusters and like ips have like taken over cinema is like also because like a lot of the stuff that like would have gotten made like in film before like is getting made in television now yeah yeah like a lot of like more mid budget like creator driven projects like you'd see that in television like um and like looking at like big names like um like i would say like anyone from like stranger things is like a big name now yeah yeah you're... like i definitely call i I'd, i consider them stars probably like at least like finn wolf and millie Bobby brown i I consider them stars yeah, like yeah, um yeah jenna ortega obviously like i feel like obviously like i mean obviously like she's really recent now so i mean like who knows how long it lasts but like you know she's like massively popular herself just like as an actress yeah um she's actually a really good example of like mm. someone that's really popular but uh definitely like even if she wasn't popular she would still continue doing the work she's like someone that has put in a lot of uh different things and a lot of them are you know like you mm. there was like this whole thing like uh ariana grande would just wanted to sing like she enjoyed yeah. singing so she just kept on doing it and now she has like a lot of people saying this and that and this and that yeah she's you know she's everything. mildly successful now she's got like what 20 grammys like, yeah, and like 58 number one singles you know she's like she's doing okay yeah she's doing decently you know? <laughs> but like she's in Fortnite. <laughs> is she yeah no she is <laughs> oh for fuck's sake fair play um yeah and like there's that whole big thing like you could go on all day about it but okay this is uh the one last quote it's from our friend anna de armas i never heard of her uh she says the concept of movie stars has disappeared because of social media I think we like, touched on that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, there is so much information out there and oversharing. The concept of a movie star is someone untouchable. You only see on screen. That mystery is gone. Yeah, no, and I think she uh, she makes a good point as well because it's like when I think of like the amount, when I think of like the people out there that are like that I would still consider more like movie stars. I'm thinking like. Tom Cruise, maybe. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise isn't on anything. Like he does interviews, but like, I don't. Does he even have? No, he has Twitter. I think, but like he's never on it. Yeah, yeah. Like same. Like I'd say, like Timothy Chalamet is like kind of. A, I'd say again, there a Timothy Chalamet movie star as well. Like I'd say, like he's definitely an exception. More recently, like again, yeah, has all the social media technically, but like he never like posts anything. Like he's pretty private. Like <laughs> he posted a fucking picture of his mouth the other day of his on mouth? Instagram of his mouth. It was like a picture of like a really no. It was a close up of his eye. And then, like, it was, the, you know, you can scroll on Instagram to, like, the next one beside it. And it was just him smiling. And I don't know, it was like, probably 